Today on the pageant cast, we have Tracy Rogers. She is Ms. America International, and she's our guest on tonight's pageant cast. TKPN. Welcome to the pageant cast, your home for beauty pageant news and interviews on the internet. We are live, and we're so excited to have you all with us tonight. I'm Tim Crenchman. I'm your host for the next program, and it's a great one because we have, on the other side of the Skype line, we have Tracy Rogers, Ms. America International. Good night, Tracy, and uh, where are we calling you tonight? Uh, St. George, Utah. Sunny uh, Southern Utah. Now, Utah, is that a big pageant state? You know, I just moved back here probably six months ago, but um, yeah, there's quite a bit of uh, uh, busy work here, at least in the southern Utah area. I think they have a pretty strong pageant showing. Okay. So I moved from Nevada, of course, big pageant state. Well, I'm in Wisconsin, and calling us a pageant state is kind of laughable. Uh, we have some great we have some great people that compete, but there just isn't the infrastructure in our state. And uh, I'm always interested to see how different states uh, react to pageantry. Uh, do you do you find you get a lot of appearances out there in Utah? Are people constantly asking for you to be in uh, parades and such? I, I get asked to speak a lot, um, a lot of engagements, lots of uh, keynote speakers, speaking with youth groups or women's groups. So usually when somebody finds out that I'm in the pageant industry and knows what my story is, then you bet I'm on somebody's calendar right away. In fact, I still have things booked out clear through the end of April at this point. So it's exciting. Fantastic. Now tell us how you got involved in all these uh, pageants. And part of that, let's talk about your pageacedents, or as I like to call them, your past pageant experiences, your pageacedents. How did you get involved in this crazy world that we call pageants? Well, I wasn't one of those girls that got into pageantry early on. In fact, I didn't even do my first pageant until I was 35, so as a missus. But I was involved in pageantry a little bit um, on the end that when I, I lived in St. George previously and one of my college professors um, realized that I had a pretty good knack for interview. And so when I was 21, he asked me to be on the um, board to help with the Miss America pageant system that was in the Southern Utah area and I actually judged numerous pageants and then um, also worked with interview with these girls. So from the time I was in my early 20s, you know, that was kind of the taste or the flavor that I had for that, but didn't actually compete in anything. Um, I grew up a tomboy, was, I was seriously like a boy, short hair, loose sprinkler pipes, liked boy stuff, played football, baseball, basketball, didn't do the girl thing. Um, so when I was 35, my um, husband and sister had said to me when he knew we were talking and they said, you know, you really should do a pageant. And it was one of those things that are kind of, you know, like, oh, well, that might be fun. And uh, I actually did the Mrs. Globe pageant and had the time of my life. Like I had no idea the um, friendships that would be made and the personal growth that would come from that. And um, I actually did really well. I took fourth runner up at nationals. and walked away from there saying, you know, gee, that was a great experience. And about a year later, I thought, wow, there really is a learning curve with pageantry. <laughs> um, I'd like to go back and, you know, do another pageant and move forward. So that's kind of where my pageant experience started. That's fantastic. <laughs> and I think a lot of folks, they think, you know, uh, I'm going to go into pageants and it'll be easy. I'll, I'll, I'll just go out there and, and do it. And there is often that, that moment where you go, oh, there's a lot to this. There's a, a lot I, I have to know. What, what were some of the things that you found yourself learning as you, you got into pageants a little more? Well, for example, you know, I had worked with a lady um, on walking. There's definitely um, a, a walk, a gait that you have, some, right. some resemblance of gracefulness, whether 
it be in your swimsuit or your evening gown or whatever, there's a little bit of a learning curve even as to the look that you have. You know, I always felt like, oh, I could do my makeup okay, but there's definitely a, a pageant look. Um, there is, I think, a sense of uh, self-confidence and knowing who you are and what you represent going into that and what the potential would be for you if you won that title like there's something inside you that kind of shifts gears and um, that you're like well this isn't I just put on a dress and a pair of heels and walked out on stage you know there's so much more to it so much more behind it than just that so tell me there was a, a period where you kind of stepped away from pageants, where where you weren't in the scene. What what happened during that period? Well, interestingly enough, it is um, what was the stepping stone to my now platform. Um, Your tomorrow starts today, but a little bit of a history there. I was the reigning Ms. America. I'm sorry, Ms. Nevada, uh, United States. So I used to say Ms. America International. I don't know what I'm going to do when I have to introduce myself and not say that anymore. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Anyway, I so I was actually traveling from uh, Nevada, where I lived at that time, up to southern Utah to get my hair done. It was on a Thursday. I was supposed to get my hair done, spray tan, uh, manicure, pedicure, that sort of thing, to check in for nationals, which were to be in Las Vegas for the Ms. United States um, pageant. And I was involved in a devastating car accident. Uh, there was a tour bus that had made an illegal U-turn on the freeway in front of me, and so my life went from literally having, you know, I was a single mother running a couple of businesses, getting ready to go represent the great state of Nevada, the United States system to be completely bedridden. I had broke my neck in nine places, my lower back, both arms, both legs, my pelvis, my hip, collapsed lung, traumatic brain injury. Um, needless to say, it took me out of that pageant running um, for a long time. I did not realize um, how long that my recovery was going to be and you know it's now been 32 surgical procedures later wow. uh, kind of like the uh, 1.3 million dollar woman but um, <laughs> I don't have any magical powers I can't leave a build a single a building in a single bound I don't have the x-ray vision but I grew a lot from that and with that growth um, my good friend Lisa and I um, came up with my platform again your tomorrow starts today and it is about not letting adverse events or circumstances define you. That it is a message of hope and inspiration and perseverance. It's a message that is applicable to everybody. Probably at some point in our lives, everybody goes through some circumstance. And so um, it would have been April of 2016. She and I were kind of talking five years. This would have been my five-year anniversary of my accident. I was kind of back on my feet. And yeah, I still have scars and a little bit of limp, but she said, you know, Trace, I just can't see you 10 years from now being happy with not going back and finish, finishing the race you started. And she was right. You know, somewhere in my mind that had just gone through and gone through, but I, could, I, I think I just kept telling myself that no, because you know the competition that there is out there. And um, I just thought, you know, she's right. I've got to go back and I've, I've got to finish that race I started. And so that was how five years later I came back in and recompeted at the Miss America pageant and won this title. So it's been an awesome year of getting to share my platform and my story. And, and you know, what a ride. It's, it's been crazy, but in a good way. <laughs> wow. That, wow. I don't even know how, how you would handle that from the um from the mental aspect let alone all of the physical healing that had to happen because everything that you could do all of a sudden you couldn't uh, right. completely and i mean i was cast to my fingertips i i don't know the last time anybody had someone try to floss their teeth who, who wasn't a dental hygienist like i had my lip slit and my <laughs> you know wow. i was grateful i had friends and family that were willing to do that for me but it took me from being somebody who was completely and totally independent to somebody who was dependent for everything, even to the fact of having to have somebody spoon feed, feed me, you know, for, it was a couple of weeks before they got me into, you know, a, a, something that where I could actually use my fingers. So it was, it was a pretty humbling experience. And I don't think that you can go through situations like that. Hopefully 
if you are brought to that kind of a situation, you'll grow from it, you know, in the best possible way. But I, I don't think you can go through experiences like that and not grow and learn and, and hopefully be, be a better person because of it. I actually think this kind of leads us into uh, is something we like to call here uh, show and tell. It's just like you went back to school all over again here. And uh, there we go. There's my... I don't know what's going on with this machine. There we go. Uh, so you had brought along something tonight for us to see well, on show and tell. Uh, what have you got there? I don't know if you can uh, see that. So what I have, um, and I'll kind of show you what's in it, but this is a little box. I opened it ahead of time because it barely shuts anymore. But this little wow. has this little space. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. My, sorry, my screen is... Yeah, we're me. getting a poor network <laughs> connection right now because we're just blasting this out across the world. <laughs> we, we are so, going out. What I've got, you can see, she made this for me um, right shortly after my accident because I had a number of people who were sending me cards and flowers and books. And, I mean, these weren't even just friends and family, which... Seriously, um, the support group that I had, the love and support that people showed me from all over the country, even the even the world. You know, I received letters from a lady from Australia who had come across my story, who sent it to my sister's home, um, where I did much of my rehab because she's a nurse, and they took me into their home, and her husband's a physical therapist. And anyway, I uh, did most of my rehab there. But in this box, I have all of these. Um, just cute letters and cards and things that people wrote notes to me, whether it was I was working with a, a young women's group in my ward. And I mean, seriously, when I when I tell you, I kept every single letter. And this wow. is just a taste of them. Um, because that's what got me through. And I I honestly, I will, I will never, um, very emotional topic to talk about. I will never forget um, the people that saw me through this. And I know there were numerous prayers and, you know, Thanksgiving that went out for me. And it really was what got me through. And it was one of those things that, you know, when I have an opportunity to speak to these groups, I tell people that meant so much to me. It was getting that little text or even just a little card or somebody took the time to write a short note and drop it in the mail and just say, hey, I'm thinking of you. You know, I may not get to see you or whatever, but just know that you're in our thoughts and prayers. And um, those always came on the days that it seemed like to be the hardest days because they were not, it was not all like what you see on Facebook. I'm not a complainer. My life is very blessed. Um, but these are the things. In this box is just such a treasure to me. And I was so excited because I knew that uh, you did the show and tell event. And I just, you know, I hope that people who loved and supported me during this know that um, those those letters and those cards and those pictures that were drawn. Um, my little nephew, for example, he he drew a picture, and it was a person driving a car, and he was only um, four, and he had said, "I hope that um, you can use your arms soon so you can drive," because I used to tell them they'd say, "What do you miss?" Well, I hadn't driven in 11 weeks, you know, um, the things that we take for granted, the things that you're not able to do once it is all taken away from you. And he, it's funny that he would have even listened to that, you know, and he'd yeah. give me this little letter, you know, I'll be so happy when you can drive. And I'll tell you what, that was a great day. <laughs> but um, it's these things. This is, this is what got me through. This is what helped me through. This is how I ended up and where I'm at today was not something that you know, I did all on my own. It was because of my healthcare providers, because of my family, my kids, um, you know, my, my brothers, my sisters, my mom, my dad, my very best friends, and then the numerous friends. And, I, and I've got to tell you, speaking about the pageant community, um, my brother was in the, he stayed at the hospital with me. I had somebody with me uh, like night and day there every time I was in and out of the hospital. But I don't think that my family really understood the significance of the pageant world. And um, my phone, once they, my phone was like broken, it was in the center console um, when the accident happened, but he said to me, you get like a hundred texts every day. 
and they'll say, I met her at a pageant, or I know her through Facebook on a pageant, or, you know, there were numerous private messaging, and the pageant world is a huge, huge, wonderful world to be a part of, and um, such a support to me. You know, all these women, numerous ones that I had never even met actually in person, but had kind of known them through social media in the pageant world, these were the people who loved me and supported me through all of this. So I, I feel like the title that I have and what I get to represent isn't just about me. It's about those people that love me and saw me along the way and helped me down this path, and they get to celebrate this with me. So it's been great. That's fantastic. Now, one of the things we want to talk about here is we want to talk about the pageant itself. And it seems like you're leading back into the pageantry here. And one of the things I first like to ask is how did you find out about the pageant that you were involved in? And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what websites and what resources you use to figure out uh, pageants and, and learn things about pageants. So let's let's start with the pageant itself. How did you find out about the Ms. America pageant? Well, you know, like um, any of them, you, you kind of do research online and, and you look at the pageants that seem like they'll be a good fit for you. And I felt like when I had done research on the Ms., meaning 26 and over, um, you know, for those of us, I, I won the title when I was 46, so I don't consider myself a youngin, but I feel like I <laughs> worked out hard at the gym and tried to get back there. Um, anyway, so yeah, it was through research, and I actually looked at a number of pageant systems, and I will say this, that I've been able to judge numerous, numerous different pageant systems. I have friends that have won titles and competed in different um, systems, and you know, they're all great. They all have their place in the pageant world. And everybody, of course, is going to have their favorite or this or that. But ultimately, Absolutely. every system gives you an opportunity to share your platform. You know, some of them are talent-based. Some of them are more service-based. Um, it just depends on where it is that you want to go with yourself in the pageant world. You know, you really need to decide what it is that, uh, that you want to do and share. If you're somebody who, who uh, like me, I felt like I had this very powerful message. I felt like the Ms. America system was great, and that's MS, you know. Right, I know. So that's there's not a conflict with trademark as right. compared to the Ms. Right. America. So yeah. we're 26 and over, can be married, divorced, single, whatever it is. But um, in any event, you just really need to do your homework because when I've worked with girls or women and coach them, I, I tell them it, it just really depends on where your passion is, what it is um, that you're looking for because every system, while the same, the queens end up with a crown on their head and that sort of thing, they're all different. You know, they all kind of have a different purpose and they all have a good purpose. So you just have to kind of do your homework. There are numerous resources. Of course, um, you can find wonderful information like uh, – uh, you know, I know pageant cast is uh, widely respected and, and watched and viewed, and it's exciting for me to be able to have this opportunity to share my story. <laughs> <laughs> I always like seeing that. <laughs> for sure. Nice. Well, and, and a lot of people, too, you, you got to go out on Facebook and talk to people that have actually participated in the pageant and, and find out what they did. Now, Let's let's give some of the statistics there for Ms. America. Some of my standard questions about pageants. So let's start with the easy stuff. What were the phases of competition? Did they have a swimsuit and interview? What what were all the uh, different phases? Well, there were um, four. The scoring is broke down into four scoring. So of course, evening gown, uh, fitness wear. They do fitness. Uh, interview which is the private interview and then if you make the top 12 there's on stage question so that the until you get to on stage question it's based on evening out fitness wear and interview the private interview excellent now what's your favorite phase of competition i'm gonna guess interview uh, you know you would think i i do depositions for a living i love to talk anyone that knows me you'll have to like shut me down when i rise up but, um, I, I got my I finger actually, on the trigger over here, so we're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
You know, this go around, I seriously had the most fabulous dress ever. I flew to Dallas. I met with uh, my pageant coach, Lisa Nuolny. Um, Yeah, I do coaching, but I feel like people need a coach, somebody to keep you on track. And she took me to Terry Costin. Oh, boy, did we ever have fun. I bought the most fabulous Sherry Hill gown ever. I'm telling you, when I stepped out on stage, I had this moment, and it was very surreal because it was that moment that I never thought I would get again. You know, I thought that that was gone, that that Mm -hmm. time in my life was gone. And so I just remember when I stepped out and feeling the light literally you know, shine on you. I, when I look back at the video, I know I had this look on my face. It was just like, oh my gosh, I just can't even believe this moment is happening for me. But that was a really incredible moment for me. I loved my dress. I loved the elegance of evening gown. I loved the music. I loved the whole feel. I felt like a million dollars at that moment. You know, your hair is done, your makeup's done. (laughs) Right. Right. It's all, you know, I, I always find it interesting, and it happens at every pageant. There, there's the girl that at the last moment changes all of, all of her, her gowns and stuff. And I'm always like, it, it, the people that I see usually walking away with the crowns, they're almost an autopilot by the time they get there. And sometimes the people that change the gowns last minute, they do win. But usually it's the folks that I I've, I've visualized how this was going to be, and um, I'm just executing the plan that I had. So what? how was it for you? You know, I knew. Um, in fact, when we went to try on dresses, it was quite a process. We had gone mm-hmm. to actually a couple of different stores, you know, along the way and came to Terry Costa. Um, great choice, by the way. I'm going to give a little shout out to them. But um, <laughs> in any event, uh, we walked in there. They kind of have this little stage, like you get to walk down in your um, gown. They they even kept telling me, we're going to have you put these other few on first. And it is interesting with gowns because it's one of those things you can see one in a magazine, you can see one on somebody else, but you get it on yourself. And it, you know, I've had dresses that I've seen before, and I'm like, this is a dress I want. I've had a picture. This is a dress I want. They put it on. You're like, no, no, no. <laughs> That's just <Right>. not pretty. <laughs> but, um, boy, I'll tell you what. I could tell when they were zipping that dress up before I'd even seen the full dress. It was just like, I just knew. Yeah. You know, I just knew. And it was an incredible feeling when they, I think most girls will tell you, when they get that dress on, it's like, oh, this is the dress. So. Yeah, I've been there a few <laughs> times when that happens, and they come out, and it's like, I, I don't have to ask them what they thought of the of the dress. When they find the dress, uh, a blind man could tell uh, right. that they found it because there's kind of like this little jumping schoolgirl thing that happens where you're like, I'm so <laughs> happy. I found exactly the right thing. It's uh, now, now for men, it's with their car. Uh, just so you know. Oh. Uh, and in some cases, they're about the same price. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let's get back to the pageant real quick. We're going to go rapid fire through a few of here. How long is the pageant? How, how long were you out there? Um, we were out there, what, four days. She does, uh, we do, okay. you do long rehearsals, you get in there. The thing I loved about Susan Jeske from the start um, she's the CEO and was the director that year. And boy, she starts sending you stuff from the start. This is what we're going to do day one. This is what's expected. This is what you're going to need. I mean, she is on it. And I'm very, the way my schedule and my life is, is just I rely on the fact of having extreme organization. And so she was so good about that. So when we got out there, when she said, we're starting at 8 a.m., we started at 8, not 8.01, we started at 8. And she just runs a very organized tight ship and you know I love that for somebody like me that was that was what I needed we got out there you did the rehearsals you did what you're supposed to do you had time to meet with the girls you had a little bit of time to yourself a little bit of time to see Brea California and then the pageant was there so there wasn't a lot of um messing around it was it was all business and and like I said that's right up my alley that's anybody that knows me that knows that's what it's all about (laughs) now we're catching you kind of near the end of your reign when is the the next pageant coming a new location Um, this year March 10th March not actually March 9th sorry we go out like the 7th so roughly the 7th through the 10th but it is on that Saturday it could be right must be the 9th 
But um, at this go around, you know, I'm kind of like, this is the easy part. I just get to go enjoy and, you know, you still want to look good as the outgoing queen, of course, but um, it, it takes a lot of the stress off. I'm excited, super excited for uh, the contestants that are coming and to be able to meet them. Um, it gets to be somebody else's time to really shine and, you know, just what a great opportunity. And I just um, take a quick moment and just give a shout out to the directors whether they're local, state, uh, or the national directors, because to be a director, that's a lot of work, you know, and it's their personal time and their life, and they're taking away for it to provide an avenue for women like me to be able to have that opportunity to um, share and go on and have a dream and share that with other people and share my platform and my story and to feel like I had just a small piece of significance, you know, in this <laughs> world. So, um, yeah, really, really neat thing that these directors do in, in all different pageant systems. But Susan Jeske's been great. She's she's um, really great to work with. And like I said, it, it, this has been a great fit for me. All right. And people that want to follow right. you, there are a lot of places to do it. Uh, on Instagram, you're Legal Nurse One, right? Legal Nurse yes. One. And on Facebook, you can follow Ms. America Pageant and the Ms. America International. There's uh, pages for both. I believe there's a group for Ms. America Pageant. Um, so lots of yeah, ways yeah. to find there's, you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say there's a group, and like a contestant's group. If you're a contestant, there's another private group. And then I also do, I run many of my posts um, public as well, which is Tracy Jones Rogers. But all of that gets run on there and then shared onto all of these other sites. So <laughs> I know it takes these days. Uh, you have 13 profiles, and it takes you 30 uh -huh. minutes to say, "I I just you know I'm a movie goer, so I'm always like, I just came out of this movie. Here's what I have to say, and uh, by the time I'm done doing that, the next showing is about to start, <laughs> and they're like, you need to leave." Uh, you need to leave. Yeah. Go away. You know. I'm checking in still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm still. I'm still checking in, and the movie's <laughs> over. You know, so that uh, that's been happening uh, far too often. Okay, well we're we're near the end, and one of the things we like to do at the end of the show, and I know you've been ready for this, it is time to see your best pageant wave now. The, I have to kind of set this up for you. You are on the back of a beautiful convertible. There are people on both sides. Both sides of the street. Let's see your best pageant wave. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm the one usually chatting at it, but I do the, you know, kind of here and here, and they kind of tell you don't cross your body, you know. But then there is the classic, like, elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, wrist. <laughs> <laughs> For this, you know, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. That yeah. is great. That is the classics. You you actually went through and gave us a tutorial, which I want to thank you There you for. go. There's your lesson. That's right. good. Because <laughs> I don't always get the tutorial. And, and let's face it, I, now, when I wave, I do this. Because I, I'm afraid I'm going to scare the small children. It, it's it's uh, a defense mechanism on my part. So it's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight, Tracy. I'm going to give you a second here. Do you have any last things you'd like to tell all the viewers about your year of service? Well, certainly. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled to have had this opportunity. It's been the best year ever. I have to say I had an opportunity to be a keynote speaker at uh, several events. I met Bon Jovi, my 80s love crush. If you see my Instagram page, it's all over that, going yes. to concerts. <laughs> but um, really, all of this, huge, huge thanks to my two sons, Derek and Damon, my beautiful daughter-in-law, Carly, my parents, um, my siblings, Jeff, Jeanette, Erica, Kendall, uh, my very best friends, uh, Lisa, Lisa, Star, Kathy, you know, um, my, my doctors who helped me get me through this, my physical therapist who had to listen to me for more than what he would ever want to. And of course, 
um, like Mikkel Webb, my hair girl, my nail girl, my tech. It takes a team to make the queen. I could go on and on, and I certainly wouldn't want to leave anybody out, but thank you to everyone who has loved and supported me. Incredibly thankful, and thank you, Tim, for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Pageant cast is great. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming on the show, and we wish you the best of luck and success as you continue on with any of your endeavors. And uh, we invite all of our viewers. We will have links to all of the uh, social media presences that she shared with us, and and we'll have those available in the show notes and on YouTube as soon as we get that all all set up. Of course, this being a live show, it's actually going to be available for people to watch immediately after. But uh, it, slowly but surely, all the notes that I took have to go out there as well, which takes a little time. Well, I want to thank you again, Tracy. This was fantastic. And uh, you've been an absolute joy to have on the program. And uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to follow you on social media and see what you're up to next. Now, something we like to do at the end, you already did the pageant wave. It's time to say Tierra Dreams to everybody. So look in that camera and on three, two, one. Tierra Dreams, everybody. Tierra Dreams, everybody. only have 20 seconds left. Anybody you still want to say hello to, Tracy? Oh my god. Um. <laughs> oh, oh no, was, she's... <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you uh, to Katie, who did all of my gowns. Thank you to Barbara, who tanned my white body. Thank you to Natalie, who also did tanning and makeup. <laughs> thank you to Judy and Terry Wright, who took care of all my headshots and photos. So, lots of thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night.